Hey team, welcome back to my channel. In this video, we're going to be looking at time zones and how they play an important part of managing the time in our Python programs. I hope you enjoy this video. Let's make sure that we have datetime and pytz installed on your local computer. Here are the commands. To get a subset of the time zones, we can say contains Americas. Notice that we get North and South America. US only, the European, and the last one I will demonstrate is Asia. And there you have it. Let's use these time zone names now and see how that works. So we say time zone equals pi tz dot time zone. Then I'm going to show you the type of that time zone. We're then going to use time zone in date time dot now, and then I'm going to print that value. Let's do this. Notice the value and the offset for each time zone. Let's get the current local time import date time. Today equals date time dot date today. I'm going to print today and then I'm going to show you the type. Notice today's date is March the 12th and it's coming from class date time dot date. A naive date time object contains no time zone info. The easiest way to tell if a date time object is naive is by checking tz info. Notice after I did now, I said dot tz info and it gave us none. When the value is set to none, the object is naive. Here you can see from date time, import date time, date and time. Notice I'm using time here, hour, minute, second. Then I'm going to print some dashes. Now I'm going to do an assignment and then show you the type. Let's do this. It's 1230. We went to the future two hours and it's date time dot time. In this example, we're going to be looking at time delta. Notice time delta is a class in date time that represents duration. By using time delta, you can configure the delta, you know, the change. Here you can see that we're using days equal 13. Our available options are days, second, microsecond, millisecond, minutes, hours, and weeks. Here I'm just using days. So I get today's date, 312, assigning that to today. I print today and then I say today plus delta plus 13 days. And then I'm going to show you the type. Now, if this delta is kind of confusing, I hope I can kind of clear it up using this two ordinal. So I'm going to take today's date and I'm going to use two ordinal and that's going to show me the number of days since one one of the year one. And then I'm going to show you its data type, which is an integer. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that date 738,226 and I'm going to add 13 days to that. And that's going to give me 325. Notice when I used time delta, I added 13 days that also gave me 325. So time delta is nothing more than converting it to a number, adding an offset, and then adding it to the original or subtracting. And that is time delta. In this example, we're going to initialize date time with year, month, date, hour, minute, second. Notice I'm importing date time, comma, time delta, I then print now, and then time delta, notice I'm using days, hours, minutes, and seconds, and then I'm going to subtract that from what we got at now. Let's see this work. Notice that we begin with March the 12th at 7, 15, 30. Then we rolled it back two days, so from 12 to 10, hours, three back, seven to four, minutes, five, and then seconds, roll that back 15. And there you have that. 
In this example, notice that from date time import date time comma time delta, notice I use time delta by itself, and import calendar. Now I'm gonna go out to the 2024, which is a leap year, 3, 12, 7, 15, 30. You know what that is, year, month, day, hour, minute, second. I'm gonna print that. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, I'm gonna set up time delta and I'm gonna say days 365, then print now minus time delta. That takes me back a year. Then I'm gonna use that calendar and I'm gonna say, is that a leap year? And it's gonna tell me, yeah, it's a leap year. Let's import pi tz date time. Then notice date time dot date time, year, month, day, hour, minute, second, and then tz info, let's use the UTC. We know that's zero. On our second one, notice that we're using the time zone Eastern Tan Standard Time. Let's see what comes out of here. Notice pz name on the first one is UTC, EST for our second one, East Coast. Now, Notice that here we're saying it, that it is 6.30 at night on the UTC line. Here I'm saying that it's 6.30 on the Eastern time zone, but that is five hours behind the UTC. So the UTC would be sitting 18 plus five. That would be its current time. In example one, notice I say UTC now and now I'm providing a time zone. So this right here is quite different from our next one. I say date time, date time now, notice no time zone. So this time zone is called naive date time. This one is time zone aware. So then I use this time zone value and I say, hey, based on that time zone value, make it look like US Eastern. Notice that we start with 804 at the UTC, and then I subtract five from that, and that puts us back at 304. Then I subtract eight from 20, and that puts us at 12. So that is this first example, as time zone. Very, very nice function. Our next example, I don't have a time zone, but I wanna give it a time zone, so I can do some fancy things. So. Go ahead and get that time. And then I say, hey, what do you want that time zone to look like? Well, I want that to look like US Pacific. So then I make that as a time zone. Then I say Pacific equals a time zone, localize that, that day time. And then that puts us out with that same time, but now it has an associated time zone to it, which is very nice. In our last example, notice I'm getting another naive day time and then I'm doing the time zone for Pacific, and that puts me at the Pacific. You know, I go from no time zone to a time zone, and then I'm saying, hey, use Pacific, and then tell me kind of like what time it is on the UTC. So Pacific dot as of time, right, UTC. And that puts me back another eight hours. So take that number, plus eight gives you 23. And that is our final example. And there you have a team, date time with time zones. I appreciate you watching this video. I'm hoping that you learned a thing or two. I know uh, making this video, I certainly did. There's a lot to be learned about date times in general. In fact, I believe just in general, the date time is the most complicated data type across all type of learning. Uh, from databases to programming, this is a very, very complicated data type. And I guess what? I appreciate your support and I look forward to seeing you back in my next video. Have a great week.